Okay, so I'm Helm Alap. I work at Duke University. I'm also a PI of the Phenoscape project, and I'm going to um, present to you Allery. Um, so um, one thing uh, that I, I wanted to note before I run out of time here is that uh, although I'm the presenter, I'm actually not the one who did most of the work. That's Jim Balhoff. Some of you may know uh, Jim. He's involved in various projects that some of you may be well familiar with, including the Gene Ontology, the Monarch Initiative, and, and a few others. Um, so um, I, I, I think many, if not most, if not all in this room are, are, are very familiar with ontologies and the power that ontologies have conveyed to uh, various domains of the life sciences. Suffice it perhaps to say that um, the one special interest group of the ICMB conference that's older than BOSC is the bioontologies group. Uh, what I want to talk about specifically here, though, is not really ontologies per se, but a specific um, um, capability, um, uh, in, a, in a sense an AI capability, that um, builds on top of ontologies, and that's owl reasoning. Uh, in a nutshell, an owl reasoner is a piece of software that uh, conveys uh, the capability to a machine to understand, reason over, and generally compute with the knowledge that we have in a certain domain. Uh, be that anatomy, be that um, the environment, and so on and so forth. And I just want to give you a few quick examples as to what that uh, could mean. Um, uh, uh, reasoning, or owl reasoning, enables us, to, for example, to link uh, uh, natural language descriptions from very different um, scientific disciplines that use different terminologies and different um, um, formats, for example, it can also enable us um, to um, assess quantitatively uh, the uh, semantics shared between different descriptions in natural language. And uh, finally, it can also, as another example, uh, allow us to infer data that's not actually asserted, that's not actually observed, but it is implied from the observations by what we know in a certain domain. And that can be very powerful and fill a lot of gaps. And uh, so uh, nonetheless, despite these tremendous capabilities that um, an owl reasoner can convey to an application, uh, there's a really high uh, barrier to deploying one. Um, and, and that's in the nature of how these tools work and, and how they're written and how they're built. Um, um, and, and so, so, so most, most prominently, um, they're, 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 they're essentially written in a lower level language and uh, they don't, they're not designed for communicating with other languages. So in essence, you have to build them into your application directly. And that's just not feasible for many web applications um, that have to, they want to communicate in other ways than having a library built in. So as a consequence, most ontology aware applications depend actually on data that's pre-reasoned. And, uh, and hence require a lot of storage. And so um, that's uh, generally the challenge of integrating a very complex artificial intelligence or machine learning um, um, algorithm into an application is not one unique in this domain. And generally just uh, the, the paradigm that uh, has broken through in terms of how to solve this is, is a client server uh, uh, paradigm where you offload the heavy lifting to a server uh, for example, sentiment analysis and natural language parsing, right? There's APIs available in Google and other cloud providers that um, really narrowed, uh, that, that, that trimmed down the effort to integrate this application to just a few lines of code, literally, right? And so that's, that's the uh, paradigm that already falls in where already comes in. So in a nutshell, it's an all ontology reasoner as a web service. Uh, it has an API, uh, a web service API that's uh, semantic web native in that um, the responses you get are JSON-LD that come together with a JSON-LD context that allows you to convert it easily into RDF if you so wish. And it's very easily configurable um, and deployable as I'm going to um, show to you in a moment. So um, just uh, a few more details. Allery supports the standard uh, all serializations in which most ontologies come. Um, that are uh, understood by this all reference uh, uh, reference API implementation that I was just alluding to. That's the all API. It can use a number of different all reasoners, from very expressive ones like an all DL reasoner to less expressive but more performing, but faster ones. And so, just to give you a quick um, overview of the API, it looks like there are the, uh, the, the, the standard queries that you would issue to uh, the all API as well, asking for subclasses, asking for superclasses, equivalent classes, whether an ontology is satisfiable, what are the instances for a certain class, um, and, and what are the types for a certain instance. 
Um, there's also an API that's included for um, um, a, a special capability that I presented here actually a few years ago that allows you to include all class expressions in Sparkle queries. Sparkle is the query language for RDF databases and have them expanded to filter expressions. Um, so the way it's built and, and deployed, you can, you can do a native build if you want to. Uh, there's a, 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 the Scala build tool allows you to build a Debian package in which you can then subsequently install. However, it's actually much easier if you don't want to build it natively. There's a pre-built Docker container that you can just pull down and run. And the only thing that needs to be done is map an application a configuration file into the container and, and that configures the um, 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 a container with the port that you wanted to have it be on, uh, and then the action knowledge bases, i.e. the ontologies that you want to be reasoned over and with which reasoner um, they, they, need, they, they need to be reasoned. And so, in summary, um, Allery is a web service, uh, um, uh, uh, semantic web compatible web service um, um, for uh, an all reasoner. Um, it's easily configurable, easily con uh, deployable, and uh, um, it's actively used also, not only by the Phenoscape project where it's coming out of, but meanwhile also by the Virtual Library project, and we hope for other adopters as well. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Hilma.